For a long time, I thought I was going to be a professor, a professor of computer science. But last week, finally, my withdrawal papers went through and I am now officially a dropout of the University of Toronto's prestigious computer science PhD department. This is my student card and it is now dead. So let's talk about it. I want to be clear before we go into this. This is not a video where I'm going to hate on the University of Toronto or academia as a whole. I loved my experience in academia. It's just over now. <laughs> and yes, there's a lot to complain about in academia. It's a large bureaucratic set of institutions. There's always something going wrong with all that. But overall, it wasn't some horrible experience that's like going downhill. That's not what I've seen. Let's bear that in mind throughout the video. I liked being at UFT. I just dropped out. I, like many students, went into my PhD with a beautiful story about becoming a professor, a professor of computer science. I've always loved teaching. I've been teaching since I was a kid. I taught guitar as a teenager, and I've always loved tech. I built my first computer with my dad when I was like 10, and I've been in love with technology ever since. So I thought to myself, look, I'll teach tech to people, I'll build cool tech, and I will do it all as a professor of computer science. That will be my path. It's not quite panning out that way, is it? I guess the question is, what happened along the way? Well, this beautiful story formed for a long time. I didn't like high school, <laughs> but I was good at computers and math. And so I went into computer science for my undergrad at the University of Guelph, and I loved it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I got to spend all my time learning about tech, talking about tech with other people, building cool things, and then I got to be a teaching assistant. And it was like, I get to teach the thing that I love to these awesome students all day long? That's my life now? <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't have been happier. And so the story started to form. How do I do this forever? How do I make this my whole life? I would say what happened is Professor became a hypothesis about how I could live my life by my values, how I could use my career to do the things that I love all the time. And so I pursued a master's and I loved that. And then I landed myself at the University of Toronto to do a PhD in intelligent adaptive interventions. Essentially, I was going to look at how we could send these little nudges to help people change their behaviors so that they were they would be more likely to do the things that they want to do whether that's exercise a little bit more or study on time my particular niche by the time i was wrapping up was smartphone addiction how do we get people to reduce their smartphone use break free of the attention economy all of that jazz i'm still really excited about that by the way i took that very seriously this is my Smartphone. Not very smart looking, is it? So there I am. Somehow I've managed to land myself at this really well-renowned research institution, the University of Toronto, and I've got myself a research niche and I'm surrounded by all these brilliant people. What went wrong? This was the beautiful story happening and yet I dropped out. Here's, here's what I think happened. Every job has a core task, maybe one or two, right? If you're a writer, your core thing is to write. You also may do interviews and like tweet things and attend meetings and stuff like that. But writing is what you do. Same with if you develop software, you still attend meetings and all of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, the one thing that you have to do is write software. And that is true of being a researcher. Your core thing is doing research. And what I realized is I don't like that. <laughs> I loved a lot about the research environment. I loved the feeling of progress. I loved participating in other people's research. I loved learning new things and building new things, but I didn't love going through data analysis and data collection and writing papers and figuring out what conferences to attend and all of this stuff. That wasn't interesting to me. And so it didn't come naturally to me. But there was something that came naturally to me that didn't to the rest of the students. And that was infrastructure stuff. At the end of the day, if you've got a prototype and you need to analyze it, it needs to get in front of people, right? I did human computer interactions. So there's a lot of UI UX design stuff happening there. So we need users. And what I loved doing was helping other researchers get their stuff in front of people. So I would do the Linuxy stuff and I would do the DevOpsy stuff and the cloud stuff and I would spend all my time supporting other researchers and helping them put out stuff. And I loved it and I loved that, but it wasn't the core task of being a researcher. And so I couldn't be a professional researcher, at least not a good one, because that core task was not what I wanted to do. Realizing this, 
the hypothesis was starting to come back with some data telling me this might not be the route for me, even though on paper it looks like it would be. And this all came to a head, this is still crazy to me, when Jeffrey Hinton won the Nobel Prize and U of T dubbed him the godfather of AI. And so I had the privilege of going to see in person, Jeffrey Hinton accept his Nobel Prize. If you don't know, Jeffrey Hinton's students, some of the founders of OpenAI and things like this, he's like one of the main guys who said, what if we made the neural networks deeper? <laughs> and all of a sudden it was viable. Here's Jeffrey Hinton, Nobel Prize winner, research god. And in the room was also the head of the IT department, John DeMarco. And he wrote a blog about the infrastructure that went behind training deeper neural networks and how they did it in the UFT department. And there's a picture of him beside like 20 NVIDIA 5070s, or not 5070s, 570s, because it's a couple years back now. And of the two people, the person I wanted to talk to most and learn from most was John, the guy who built the infrastructure, the guy who said, what if we just run Linux with a bunch of NVIDIA GPUs? Do you think if we clustered them, we could train the stuff? That's what I wanted to know. And it clicked because everyone was salivating over the opportunity to talk to this brilliant researcher. And I wanted to talk to the guy who supported him. And so the beautiful story collapsed in that moment, but a new one started to form. Professor, as a hypothesis, turned out not, not gonna let me live by my all of my values. There's something else I like. And so I needed to go looking for something new. I needed to form a new hypothesis. And, and central to that was this question. How do I make what I'm naturally inclined to, this infrastructure stuff, how do I make that what I do every day and still get to teach and that sort of thing? Still get to teach, still get to do tech, but now my focus is not on research, it's on supporting research. Well, it turns out that's a whole job. And now I cannot believe my luck, but I get to be a research engineer. My job, is to build infrastructure for researchers to do their research. Now the core task of my, of my occupation is to do exactly what I love to do. There is of course the issue of teaching and that's why I've arrived here on YouTube. I still love teaching and I wanna be in front of students and being on YouTube and streaming and things like that give me an approximation of that. So I dropped out and I found something better for me. And through that process, I learned a lot about myself and I think some generalizable principles. So let's talk about that. The first is what I call the principle of natural effort. Now, everything good in life requires you to put in some amount of effort and putting in effort is always a challenge. It's, it's effort, <laughs> but it's true. Even the simple things like keeping your apartment clean requires effort or maintaining a loving relationship with your partner or your family requires you to put in some amount of effort and being good at your job requires some amount of effort. Now, I, I think we often think about getting yourself to do effortful things as universally challenging. I think that's wrong. Sometimes in some domains, if you're in the right place, the effort comes naturally. It still exhausts you, it's still effort, but getting yourself to do the hard thing is pretty easy. And for me, I realized as a researcher, getting myself to do the hard work of conducting research, that did not come naturally to me. And so it was the wrong place for me. It was the wrong thing for me. But getting myself to build infrastructure for them, oh baby, <laughs> easy. I loved doing that and I would do it. I loved it so much that I would do it to exhaustion, maybe a little too much. Uh, and the same was true of teaching. I love teaching and getting myself to put in the hours and the time and spend time with students is easy. If you want to be really good at your career and being good at your thing is a lot more fun than not, <laughs> then finding where natural effort is for you, that's a good thing to do. Secondly, your career trajectory should be a series of hypotheses you're constantly testing. My main goal with my career, aside from, you know, not being broke, is to make sure that I get to live by my values every day. I love teaching, I love technology, and now I've learned I like the environment of research and supporting research 
but not conducting research. How do I live by those values? I had a hypothesis about what my values are, and I had a hypothesis about how to live by them, be a professor of computer science, and it turns out I wasn't quite right. But by asking those questions, I got closer. And now I'm a research engineer, and that's a little bit better. Well, to be frank, it's a lot better. <laughs> I think over time, I'll keep building these hypotheses and asking these questions to make sure that I continue to live by my values, because they might change over time. One day I'll have kids and my values will change. <laughs> my values, I assume, will constantly be evolving. There will be some constants. I, I doubt I'll ever stop loving tech or teaching. But the minutia, those little things like, I don't love doing research, I love helping research, I'll identify those. And those might change too. And so I'll continue to form these hypotheses and not stay too attached to a single beautiful story. Yeah, I think that's what I learned from my short stint as a PhD student. If this is interesting to you and you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribing, all of that jazz. I intend to live out my value of teaching through this YouTube channel, through the stream, through the newsletter I'm kicking off, and the Discord. So if any of that is interesting to you, I would love it if you stuck around and said, hey, that's all for now. I'll catch you in the next video, stream, Discord, or thing. <laughs> Bye.